You're tuned in to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. That's not to say that they don't respect the run game that you have, but you're talking about one quarterback leading the, the conference in passing so far this year. And remember, he didn't start the first game. All right. Still played a lot, though. And also bringing some humor to your day. I, I just don't want to disappoint you. I just... As much as I disappoint you, I don't want to disappoint you in some things that you expect from me. Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. A couple things that uh, have uh, happened overnight. Uh, one, one that's uh, uh, kind of shocking from a baseball standpoint. And then uh, Franco Harris died overnight. Um, a couple of days shy of the uh, 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. So if you hadn't heard that, that's, uh, that's what took place. But then... But then, Jamie, <laughs> this baseball deal with uh, Carlos Correa, uh, you know, he was going to be a San Francisco Giant. And not anymore. Not anymore. And, I mean, they were they were literally a couple of hours away from introducing him uh, to the San Francisco media. I mean, they had the press conference all set. They had everything set up. And they got results back of a physical that you would understand that they would do for somebody that is signing a $350 million contract. And there was something that uh, they didn't like on that. And so they, they put the press conference on hold and now lo and behold, he's turned around and, and done a 12 year, $315 million deal with the New York Mets Mets. So he's gone coast to coast in uh, just, just a few hours. Yeah, it sounds like there was a medical issue, and the Giants <clears throat> balked at it a little bit, and Correa said, okay, well, I'll head elsewhere then. And what's the difference of, what, $35 million mm-hmm. over the it's length a, of the it's, contract? It's, a, it's one year less. Mm-hmm. You know, it's one year less and, mm-hmm. and $35 million. But, <clears throat> man. I think he fits the Mets perfect. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love this move. <laughs> Uh, but now the the Mets and their owner Steve Cohen they've committed more than eight hundred million dollars to free agents this off season. Eight hundred million. You can't sell enough T-shirts and swag and hot dogs and cold beers and tickets, can you? I just wonder with the chip on the shoulder that Carlos Correa has with anything when he's ever been questioned about anything mm-hmm. how he's going to handle being in new york oh because he's sensitive yeah yeah now do you think there's a do you think there's a level of um criticism or expectation that is highly elevated when you compare the yankees and the mets because it seems to me that the Yankee guys are much more under the scrutiny of the New York media than the Mets. It seems like we hear way more about that. Time, I think there was a time when that was the case. I mean, as you just mentioned, they've spent a little cash on yeah. their team. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I think you, I think the New York media will have pretty high expectations for them too. Okay, just like they did this year, and Bucks boys collapsed down the stretch. Right. It just seems like <laughs> it just seems like that. Well, the, the, while there may be more, it just seems like if, if if you took this $800 million and put it on the Yankees, the expectations would be... We'd ten, be talking about what? They be, would be the same. Well, it would be 10... No, it'd Win be, the World yeah. Series. No, 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 but it would be 10 times. But what the point that Jamie's going to make is we'd be talking about they're buying a, they're buying a championship. I mean, I don't say we. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> Well, it's we, the collective we, <laughs> yeah. sports we. Sports world would sports, be saying, sports oh, yeah. But Yankees, meanwhile, there's, none the... of the, there, there's not any of that. Well, you haven't heard very much of that about the Mets. Yeah. I don't know. It's just, The Yankees are treated different. They are. Whether it's positive or negatively. Whether it's fair sure. or not. Sure. The Yankees are. And there's a part of, I would think there's a part of you as a Yankee fan that would be like, hey, bring it on. That's that's who we are. We're We're highly criticized and we're highly rooted for. Yeah, sure. You know? Sure. Bring it on, right? Mm-hmm. You do you. You don't mm-hmm. care. Uh, but anyway, it's just I just thought that was... I'm curious what the injury was, and I'm, I'm curious, uh, did the Mets, did the Giants get cold feet, and all of a sudden they're like, hey, he's got a problem with a pinky finger. 
may not be able to grip the bat. Well, I, think the, I think the Giants probably would. It would have been something more serious. You would think. Or I right? wonder if they were using that for leverage. You know, say, okay, well, it looks like your knee might have some issues, so we're only going to, you know, offer you $320 million mm-hmm. instead of 350 Yeah, they might have balked on some of the guarantee. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no. No. So, um, but apparently... Um, People throughout the industry, quote, who spoke to ESPN yesterday, felt that the deal would still be finalized. But I guess the Mets looked at this and said, okay, here's an opportunity. Here's an right? opening, yeah. So I guess he hadn't signed them. his contract yet. Clearly not, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Clearly not. Good for the Mets, striking why the iron is hot again. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're loving this because you think it's going to fail. Just It's going to be explosive. Just, li- just like I love when my favorite players are on my favorite team. Mm-hmm. I love when my least favorite players are on one of my least favorite teams. <laughs> okay. Does that make sense? Absolutely. No, yeah. it's complete. It's completely I, fair. I mean, there was a while there. I was a little <laughs> bit nervous. The Yankees were going to do something stupid and try to sign Correa. Were you nervous yesterday when you found out that the Giants weren't going to have the press conference? I didn't. I didn't even know. Okay. Didn't even know till this morning, and I saw that you signed with the Mets. Okay. I, I saw that great. yesterday. I didn't even think that they don't, would. Don't get me wrong. Correa is a terrific player. And still decently young, so mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's a terrible move. Mm-hmm. I, I just I I am definitely intrigued by how Correa handles New York. Yeah, no, I think that's yeah, there, generally speaking. There's that's guys that that's gone really mm-hmm. well for, yep. and there's guys that it it has not gone well for, and usually mm-hmm. it's the guys that are a little bit more level headed. Mm-hmm. I think Carlos Correa is not necessarily your level headed type. Mm-hmm. How do you think you would handle the New York media? Like if you were, um, they would famous, hate, they would hate me as f- famous sports talk host in, in New York. Do you think the fans, do you think the New York, uh, sports talk fans would, would embrace you and, and love you? No, <laughs> I think I'd be way too boring. I don't have strong enough opinions about things. Mm. Yeah. But how would you handle their criticism? Do you think if I was an athlete there, they would hate me because I would give them no information. You would give them no information. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Right. I would treat them like the buffoons that they are. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Uh, a couple of bowl games today. <clears throat> the R plus L equals Y. Carriers New Orleans Bowl is today. Western Kentucky and South Alabama. That uh, will be at 8 o'clock tonight. And we'll have that game for you on 100.7 The Score at 7.30. Your morning blend of sports. K-State is uh, coming off a big win over Oklahoma. Of course, the Red Raiders off their 37-34 overtime win over number 22, Texas. And humor. Sure to tell them that. You, you suggested that. <laughs> and, of course, they got a big laugh. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. Catch the show live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Double T 97.3 FM or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Time for this day in sports history. Today is December the 21st, 2022. Here with the stay in sports history is Jeff McGuire. What today lacks in sports history mm-hmm. makes up foreign birthdays. 1941, Chicago Bears' Ray McLean makes the last NFL drop kick for an extra point. Oh, man. it's When you can execute the drop kick. Well, it, it hasn't been done since 41. I know, so. but I mean, but there's it's guys that have done club. it in college and, you know, on the practice field and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's extremely difficult. Mm-hmm. 1959, Tom Landry accepts the coaching job with the Dallas Cowboys. He would stay until 1988. That's a good hire. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> stuck around a bit. Had some success while he was there. Mm-hmm. 1981, Tom Landry still the coach for the Cowboys. Cincinnati beats Bradley 75-73 to in seven overtimes, mm. which is at the time an NCAA record. 1984, Brigham Young University beats Michigan 24 to 17 in the Holiday Bowl at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego to remain undefeated and secure their first ever NCAA Division 1A football title. Is that a uh, Jim McMahon team or is that a uh, Steve Young team? I think that would be Steve Young. Yeah, I think you're right. And in 1997, Detroit Lions Barry Sanders is the Barry Sanders, there's an S there, Jeff 
is third to run for 2,000 yards in a single season. It is National French Fried Shrimp Day. Mm. Not as I'm okay with it. I just prefer the regular shrimp better. So like grilled or boiled or just boil. Yeah, the, the kind you get at the grocery store. That you know it's cold. The cold, cold boiled. I guess cold boiled. You know the cold shrimp that you go and you get. Yeah, the, I don't think it's. I mean. It's fresh, right? But it, it's fresh. I don't. I don't know if they've boiled. If that you're in. boiling it, it's not going to be cold. No, but I just didn't know if they boiled that. Then they. Then made, they put it on ice. Yeah, yeah. And then they put it on ice. And then, and then, do you eat it cold? Yeah, I eat it cold. Yeah. You do. With some. I, with I would some guess most people do. I don't know. Shrimp I'm, sauce. I'm not a shrimp eater. I'm just a shrimp. Baseball and football galore today for our birthdays. We're going to start. With Tim Tadlock celebrating a birthday oh. today. He's 54. We're going to shift over to football with Anthony, Anthony Lynn is 58. Baron Batch is 35. Mm -hmm. Samuel L. Jackson is 74. Mike Vitar, better known as Benny the Jet Rodriguez in the Sandlot, nice. is 44. Mm -hmm. Jane Fonda, 85. Ray Romano, 65. Kiefer Sutherland, 56. Ha Ha Clinton Dix is 30, Mark Ingram Jr. 33, and Phil Donahue is 88 years old today. And on this day in 1988, something I wish we could forget. Pan Am Flight 103 from London to New York explodes in midair over Lockerbie, Scotland, killing 243 passengers and 16 crew members aboard, as well as 11 Lockerbie residents on the ground. The bomb hid inside an audio cassette player detonated in the cargo area. When the plane was at an altitude of 31,000 feet, the disaster, which became the subject of Britain's largest criminal investigation, was to believe to be an attack on the United States. Of the people killed, 189 of them were American. And that is this day in sports history. Well, and I have one happy birthday in our family. It is uh, our youngest grandson, Nehemiah. It's his third birthday today oh, so happy birthday. happy birthday to maya parker today it's his third birthday so uh big celebration for him we're gonna go to the basketball game today so uh he's all about it he's all about birthday and he's all about christmas and uh, it all's all coming together for him awesome so good for uh happy good birthday. for him happy birthday to maya all right 6 51 this morning here on the morning drive uh somebody brings this up from the um Yates Flooring Center chat line. Uh, Robbie Bosco might have been that quarterback uh, for BYU. Yeah, he played in the national championship. He won a national championship in 1984, which which would have then been a, quote, mythical, but it was a, as a, is how it was done, national championship. Right? That's, that's all those were mythical, right? Because it they wasn't were, a... They were voted on, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 652 this morning here on the morning drive. Uh, somebody says this is called shrimp cocktail, Chuck. Yeah, but they don't just pull it out of the ocean and then just put it on ice, do they? Maybe they do. I thought they had to cook that a little bit first, but I don't know. I'm not there in the kitchen when they at the grocery store when they're doing that. Me and Bubba Gump, Gump, Gump got a lot in common. There's not almost a bad way to do shrimp. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Um, take your uh, thoughts and comments this morning on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. Go to the Double T 97.3 mobile app uh, presented by Happy State Bank. Benchmark hotline is open as well at 806-771-0973. We'll have Red Raider basketball for you on the air today at high noon. They take on Houston Christian. We'll uh, give you some numbers on that. I uh, heard a little bit from uh, Coach Adams yesterday. They talked about... They're three-point shooting, got to block out, got to have high hands, usual typical stuff. But one thing you don't want to let a team like that do is come in here and all of a sudden get hot, right? Mm -hmm. And feel like they have a chance. Sure. All those yep. things. So, I mean, you're you're biting, fighting Santa Claus a little bit because the players will leave after this game and, uh, and then be back. I'm, I'm not sure when they're due back. They play on the 27th. Um, so... Certainly, probably sometime on Christmas night or, or um, first thing, uh, the 26th. Uh, the women also play on the 27th, and I know they're due back on the 
on the uh, on the 26th. Uh, the Tech women don't play until tomorrow. They'll play UC Riverside at uh, two o'clock, and of course we'll have those that game for you as well on 100.7 The Score and on 107.7 Yes FM. But today at noon, it's Houston Christian and the Red Raiders as uh, the final game before um, Christmas. It's not the final game of 2022. They'll play two next week, one on the 27th, and then uh, it all begins for a Big 12 play on New Year's Eve uh, for the Red Raiders at TCU. This is the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3, getting you ready for today's sports day. You know, three of the first four games have been at home, so you know at some point in time you're going to have to venture out outside the 806, so that'll be... That'll start this week. While having a little fun along the way. Always good if you can blame it on somebody else, right? Yeah, sure. Especially some media guy. Sure. Right, some media guy. Catch the show live weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. I think we're going to have a white Christmas, but it's going to be a cold Christmas. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's not freezing out there yet, but it's 34. It's but close. It's, it's going to get down into single digits uh, later on in the week, so... That's right. It should feel like it should feel like uh, this time of year. It should feel cold. It should be a little brisk out there. It should have to use a coat. It shouldn't be out there sweating, you know, seventy five degrees or anything like that. I mean, I know that's what you'd care for, but that's what I would prefer. Yeah, right, right. I got it. I got you enjoy it. cold? No, I just I think when it's like around Christmas and Thanksgiving when it's supposed to be cold, I like it being cold. I like it, even though you'd like warm weather better. You want it at this time of the year just to be cold. To be unhappy. No, I'm not unhappy. I'm not unhappy. I just want it to be cold so it feels like it feels like the time of year that it's supposed to feel like the time of year. Okay. okay. I'll 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 let you do you on that one. But yeah. I like the weather warmer and I like the weather warmer all the time. All the time. But yeah, I don't like certain times. I don't feel like I need to feel the I like cold the seasons. to appreciate the warm. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm not asking for 108 or anything, mm-hmm. but no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, this time of year, I like it to be gray and overcast and cold, and with a little bit of sunshine peeking through in the afternoon, <laughs> just so that just so it feels like Christmas, feels like it feels like Christmas, a little briskness in the air, it's like hey, it feels like Christmas. I'll buy in if there's some snow on the ground, okay. but just just cold. And gray and overcast sounds miserable. Hey, do you know, uh, do, there's hope for you. Do you know what today is? Uh, in Wednesday. Addition, it, it's Wednesday. Mm-hmm. It's the uh, day the work is supposed to get done. I don't know how much is going to get done because it feels like the whole town's shutting down right now. That was my experience yesterday. It's like everybody's just said, screw it. It's just, it's it's done. Year's over. Um, today is the winter solstice. Today is the shortest day of the year. And it will be... Uh, the winter solstice today occurs at 348. It's funny, I was driving Does home. it make the show shorter? You know what makes this show shorter is the entertainment that we're providing because <laughs> it has flown by so far. Jeff, the first hour and 17 minutes. Jeff just gave me a look. <laughs> I was thinking yesterday on my way home, it's like, man, it sure is. sure feels like it's getting dark early today. And now I know why because today's the shortest day of the year and yesterday was the second shortest day of the year. I thought it was light out this morning. Mm. It was foggy this morning. Foggy, yeah. I thought it was lighter than normal. Right. Well, maybe was, one of my neighbors had a big light, or maybe if somebody's Christmas lights. He, you know, probably so. I might be. I might. I might live I next been, to Griswolds. Uh, I don't know. Since um, s- since we went to the uh, new energy conserving light bulb that was forced upon me, um, I've been leaving my lights on overnight, and I've kind of enjoyed getting up in the morning and seeing the lights on as I. As I'm leaving, and I've noticed uh, my neighbors started doing that too. They were they were ahead of me on that. Uh, and then one of the, the the guy right across catty corner across the street from me, sometimes they're on, sometimes they're off. This morning they were off. So I was kind of I was kind of sad by that. I was sad for him because the guy across the street he really upped his game uh, with his Christmas lights this year. It makes me feel like next year I've got to up my game a little bit. But I've enjoyed seeing the lights on in the overnight, and I feel like that for the energy that we were saving by going to the energy conservative light bulbs i'm going ahead and using that extra energy uh for the overnight time period for people that are coming home from their jobs or whatever it is they're doing so that they have a little smile on their face when they go by my house so i'm not really saving any energy with the energy saving light bulbs because i'm leaving them on longer so there 
So they're energy conservatives. Boy, you told that. <laughs> Boy, did you tell that. All right, today uh, the Red Raiders will welcome a bunch what of a, new... What a hill to go die on. <laughs> Uh, today, the Red Raiders will uh, welcome a bunch of new a new, bunch of newbies. Uh, they're going to sign a quarterback, uh, Jake Strong, and someone is saying he's already he has already signed. They're going to sign a couple of running backs. They're going to sign three uh, wide receivers, and then this will warm your heart. They're going to sign four offensive linemen. So hopefully, those are guys that can come in here and develop, and um, and be a guy that uh, be guys that can provide protection for Jake Strong or whomever it is. Back there at quarterback. Baron Morton, maybe. You know. Hey, Baron, you haven't played very much, but we've already got your replacement. Man, that's just such a strange thing, isn't it? When you bring it, but it, you've got to do it, right? You've always got to be, you've always got to be filling holes or sure, especially hole. now with the transfer portal. Right. Uh, you're going to sign five defensive linemen, uh, the three linebackers, including John Curry from uh, Coronado. And, uh, and then, they list him as a linebacker? They list him as a linebacker. <laughs> So they're going to put a little more weight on him? I have no idea. Yeah. And then five defensive backs uh, as as well. So, uh, and then I guess they'll Kane probably, Carr, they list him as an offensive lineman, which he is. Yeah. And he'll probably. be an early enrollee, too. <laughs> <laughs> that seemed a little stupid to say that, didn't it? They'll probably put weight on all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And some so muscle, too. Not, not just... Not just Curry, right? Oh yeah, they'll, yeah. They'll, they'll they'll beef them all up, put them in the weight room, all that kind of stuff. Because mm-hmm. the the grind for these guys is about to begin, especially for the early enrollees. And there's a number of those guys, you know the the off season conditioning that will start, you know, probably right after the first of the year. It's like, all right, get out there and run the stairs, then lift this weight and do this and do that. You know what they ought to do is they ought to take the double T scoreboard and have them kind of move it around over there <laughs> that'd be a good exercise for him all right pull it here pull it there pull it here pull it there it's, uh, I'm, seems like that'd be a little difficult all uh, right mm-hmm. if you could move it an inch that'd be that'd be pretty good they have moved it uh from behind the stadium uh to uh to a spot where they can uh you know wait for the stadium to be built and then uh, they're going to put up a new double T scoreboard, and then they'll figure out a spot to put the old double T scoreboard. Very cool. So that's uh, that's already excited that's to good. see where it ends up. Right, right. Uh, PJ says this NSD twenty twenty three is here. It's a Jamie. Would you like to say this? I feel like this is your line. It's a great day to be a Red Raider. It is. It'll be a great day for these new guys. Can you give it in your baseball voice, like after a win? I can't. <laughs> I can't. I, you just can't turn can't, that on and turn okay. it off. It yeah. takes real excitement. Okay. I've told you one thing I hate is fake. No, I know. I know. You can't even give us a, it's a great day, and you can't do it, can you? You just did it for us. No, it, it's mm-hmm. not the same. It's not the same. You you do it best. <laughs> uh, this, at Jamie, please save Chuck, LOL. <laughs> I'm beyond saving. Um, <laughs> Sentex Hank, hate the cold regardless of when it's supposed to be cold. Okay. Yeah, I mean... Cold without uh, snow is stupid. Okay. I mean, if I lived in Hawaii or Mm -hmm. somewhere in some tropical Mm -hmm. climate, I mean, at Christmas time, I wouldn't be yearning to be walking around with extra layers on and shivering and... Right. I can't wait to get to my car and hit my sea eaters. Right. (laughs) No. Again, there's some fun in snow, especially if you're a kid. Yeah. And it looks pretty, mm-hmm. all that, mm-hmm. but just cold yeah. and gray. I know. Well, just for just for a couple of days, just just to kind of make you feel like, oh, it feels it feels like it's supposed to feel. Uh, this sure felt like Donovan's departure wasn't the best. A little salty. I hope he doesn't beat us next year. South Texas Ambassador Preston. Mm, what okay. did I miss there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. What did he I said, miss that was salty? I don't know. He said it felt like it. I, I don't know. I don't think I missed any saltiness by him. I think he was exited there like pretty a, gracefully, actually. I mean, there was no comments, right? I don't think so. I haven't I, seen anything. I don't think he... Did he even tweet out some love you, Lubbock, now I'm heading to Houston kind of deal or anything like that? I don't like think that? I saw that, no. Which is or fine. I'm heading into the portal. I think no, he just basically he just, said he just, nothing. 
he kind of gave you an Irish goodbye. Just left. Yeah. Yeah, which is okay. Yeah, it's just fine. Irish goodbye. That's what an Irish goodbye is? Yeah, I think, okay. just, I think well, that's what it is. You just yeah. leave. I think that's probably what I'll do then. There'll be a time when we'll just come in here and there'll be like, they'll be like George. Some, with George. Some new and improved, tall, handsome guy. With George uh, Smith. I'm Chuck Hines. It's nice to have you with us here on the Morning Drive. You're listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3, recapping the night that was in the world of sports. A little bit later on tonight, uh, we'll have uh, the Astros and the Diamondbacks. That'll be at 8. And then the Rangers playing at Seattle uh, tonight. And also bringing some humor to your day. Wait. Was it pretty big? Yeah. I mean, Impressive? It's, yeah. Was it fascinating? It was. I thought it was fascinating. It kind of smelled, but I mean. <laughs> Hear the show live weekday mornings at 6 on Double T 97.3 or on the Double T 97.3 mobile app. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. I should have said D the day instead of Dia the day. Dia is day, so it can't have two questions in one day. You probably have a lot of questions swirling around in your head. But you've got one in particular for us. Yeah, so I, I figured I'd go with the theme of National Signing Day. Okay. Okay. And so my question to you is, as a Red Raider fan, or maybe just a football fan in general, when Signing Day comes around, mm-hmm. what are you the most excited to see? Like what position group, what, you know, what... Uh, you know, the balance of offense to defense. I mean, those kind of things. What are you most excited to see on signing day? Are you going to think this is crazy? What I look for the most uh, after we get the little packet uh, from uh, the Minister of Football Information is a look at the very bottom of each of the bios, <clears throat> and I see who they picked Texas Tech over. Mm-hmm. That tells me, in my mind, to a degree – the level of talent of a player that you're getting, <clears throat> the level of competition that you're competing against, and it just thrills me when you've won over other Power 5 schools. I, I completely agree with that. I just am also have gotten to the point where um, I've seen it happen <clears throat> enough where I think a team may talk to Alabama doesn't mean they were offered by Alabama, and it's still listed in their pick Texas Tech over Alabama. I'm just using that as a silly example, okay? But no matter what school you're talking about, you see that in there. Like, whoa, 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 that school didn't offer. They just, you know, he, had, he visited there or whatever, and see, they never offered. See, that's the gullible side of me that yeah. thinks that you know we won the recruiting battle over Nick Saban or fill in the blank coach. <laughs> but I agree. That's something I look for, too. I think that's a good answer. One of the things I look at is in the descriptions after we get the packet of information is when they're using the words like speed. You can have a great highlight reel and not be a great player. You can't fake speed. You are either fast Mm. or you are not. That is running against a clock. And speed is one of those things that you can't teach. You either are fast or you aren't. And at a lot of positions football... Speed kills. That's yeah. what I like to look for. So one of the things going off of Jeff there that I, I like to see is I love when they sign a guy and list him as an athlete. <laughs> okay. And they're like, I don't know where this guy's going to play. Offense, defense, wide receiver, cornerback, safety, running back. I don't, I don't know. But we just know he's a great athlete and we're going to find a spot for him. We'll, we'll figure it out. So that... That's one of the things for me. The other thing, I'll just be completely honest, plain and simple, very basic. Defensive lineman. Defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. It's always defensive lineman for me because I feel like it's so hard. It's been so hard for Texas Tech to get quality ones. And to me, it's one of the, the most rare position, positions across the country to get really, really good ones. And they all seem to go play in the SEC. And so I'm always looking at defensive linemen. And so, building off of you, Chuck, I look at the defensive linemen, and then mm-hmm. I was like, who else was after them? Who else was looking at those guys? That's what gets me excited, to see defensive linemen that I think are quality. And see, the the, <clears throat> the other thing for me is, 
I, I look for the flash. I look for the I look for the guys that the running backs, the receivers, and the quarterback. I, I just it, feel like we are always going to be able to get them. I yeah. think Jake no. Strong's video looks great. His film, whatever you want to call it, looks great. Looks like a good quarterback. No, your, your answer is more sensible. Mine is just like I just like <laughs> I look for the flash. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. like okay, like right. uh, yeah. how many, how fast, how far does this guy throw, and what you know, what kind of uh, stats does he have and completions and touchdowns and yeah i just think i mean you look at their numbers in in high school i mean what kind of system were they in what what kind of i didn't say what level were they playing i i but i i i just look at defensive linemen Mm -hmm. i get more excited because i feel like we were always able to get wide receivers or quarterbacks sure no running what you're saying is sensible mine is mine is not sensible you know defensive linemen and offensive linemen it's just not the sexy side i like to see high numbers in completion percentage for quarterbacks Mm. because you know former coach we had here, Mike Leach, who uh, ceremony was yesterday. Uh, You can't teach accuracy. You either are or you aren't. And if you can throw 50 balls to 50 guys accurately, they may only go 10 yards, but they're getting where the receiver needs them. The receiver can make a play afterwards. I know that makes you a bus driver, but also it means that you're moving the chains and you're making an effective offense. Hey, he can throw it 80 yards down the field. Nowhere near the receiver, but he threw it 80 yards doesn't help as much. Patrick Mahomes can, and it's to the receiver. Yeah, he's yeah. accurate. The, the, <laughs> both is really nice, <laughs> but if I have to pick one over the other, I'll take the accuracy. Fair. I'm with you. Uh, this from the Ace Flooring Center chat line. We have a lot of defensive linemen in this class. JL, yeah, we have five. Yeah, that's yeah, good. That's good. Uh, and, and there's no question. I mean, your ability to put pressure on the quarterback is incumbent upon being successful in the Big 12 or really at any level. And your ability to protect your quarterback is really incumbent upon you to be really successful in the Big 12 or any level for that matter. So, <laughs> as they as they like to say, the game is won in the trenches, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's where clearly, uh, if you look at the past 10 years, specifically, maybe even the last 13 years, specifically, you've not been very good in the trenches, either uh, capturing the quarterback or putting pressure on him or forcing him to make throws he doesn't want to th- make. Conversely, protecting your quarterback so that he doesn't make the throws that he doesn't want to make and put himself in a bad position. So if if we could just figure that out, which they've been trying to do, uh, it's not like anybody's over there and going, ah, yeah, that is overrated, having an offensive line and a defensive line. That's overrated. Yeah, I don't think anybody's ever said that. <laughs> I don't that. think anybody's ever said no. that. You do need to have a quarterback yeah. that's worth a darn, and you do need receivers that can get open and, and uh, as you like to say, can catch the ball. <laughs> right. you know, we need those guys, too. Uh, this from the Yates Flooring Center chat line. We are the problem. Y'all's mentality is part of our problem. we always concerned with weak offensive linemen. Not one of you mentioned offensive linemen. Well, we, we have. We, just, we have mentioned offensive linemen. <laughs> Over the years, yeah, not just the last three years, mm-hmm. have we been better on the offensive line or the defensive line? Offensive line, uh, offensive, yeah, by offensive line, yeah. The last I, I three agree. years, flip it. Yes, you know if you if you kind of look in our uh, if look in the NFL history of kids that have gone from here to there, we've had a significant number of offensive linemen. Mm-hmm. I think you put more offensive linemen in the league than wide receivers. And you put a that. bunch of wide receivers. Yeah. yeah, and you've had some defensive linemen that have been successful, you know, in the in the league as well. Kerry Hyder. Yeah, that's the one that comes to mind, right? Getting your sports day started the right way. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, breaking down the biggest games. If Texas Tech does not win the Big 12 Football Conference, who are you rooting for to win the conference? If Tech does not win it this year. Well, busting some chops along the way. I hold back on sending you stuff. I mean, I'm very, very, very judicious. We spend three hours a day, five right? days a week together. We, why yeah. do, Why would yeah. we need to communicate during the weekends? <laughs> right. Save we it for the show. We, we, save, we do. We save it for the show. The- Tune into the Morning Drive live weekdays from 6 to 9 on Lubbock Sports Station. Double T 97.3. Thank you for being with us today on Lubbock Sports Station, Double T 97.3 and Double T 
97.3.com with Jamie Lint and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. We come to you this morning from the First United Bank studio here in downtown Lubbock. And I look forward to hearing from you today on the 8th Flooring Center chat line. Go to doubletea973.com for that or the mobile app. Benchmark hotline is open as well at uh, 806-771-0973. Uh, we'll have uh, Texas Tech basketball for you on the air today as uh, they take on Houston Christian. That'll be a 12 noon pregame and uh, play-by-play at uh, 1 o'clock uh, this afternoon from United Supermarkets Arena. So it's a great great day to take uh, anybody uh, to the ball game today because, uh, you know, it's 1 o'clock tip, kids are out of school, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, should be uh, entertaining. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, Raider Red will be there dressed up in his uh, Santa Claus outfit. So that's always good. Nice. It's always good. Mm-hmm. Maybe he has some candy canes in his pockets. Who knows? I don't know if he's allowed to do that or not, but if he did, that'd be that'd be sweet, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, this Houston Christian team, they, they score a lot of points. Um, so let me kind of give you just a little bit of the rundown for them. Maybe the measuring stick um, for us today is this team comes in at three and nine. They're uh, three and they're zero oh and five away from home. Uh, they've lost two straight coming in. They lost to Texas back on November the 10th in um, Austin, 82 to 31. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's a 51 point margin of victory uh, for UT. Uh, however, they have uh, most recently lost to Missouri, 105 to 69. So that's what, 36 points. They lost to. Um, UT Rio Grande Valley on December the 10th, 95 to 82. And um, they played them a week later, too. They, they loved it so much that they went back and played a week and a day later. <laughs> they, played, they played December 10th. I'm not kidding you. And they played Rio Grande Valley at home, okay, mm-hmm. 95 to 82. And then they, they did a home and home with them, I guess, and lost to them 100 to 90. That's their most recent uh, loss was uh, Sunday uh, to uh, RGV. But they put up 90 points. So I don't care who you are and what level of competition you're you're playing. 90 points is still 90 points. And, you know, I think maybe that's one of the things that Coach Adams was just a, a little bit uh, concerned about was just the fact that they can they could uh, put some points up. Uh you know, for themselves. So you have to, you have to respect that. Don't you? I think to a, to a degree. I mean, yeah, I mean, that to a, to a show that they're going to challenge your defense. Um, they, they average 80.2 points a game. Okay. Uh, they're 48% from, uh, the field. They've made 363 field goals. They're 37, uh, percent from beyond the arc. They've made 101 threes on the year. Uh, they're not very good free throw shooters. They're 68. They turn the ball over about 16 times a game. So that's uh, that's kind of something to keep in mind today when you're when you're looking at this team. Now Texas Tech, conversely, uh, the Red Raiders have made 265 field goals. So they've made goodness, they've made uh, almost 100 field goals more, and they've put up. 200 shots more than the Red Raiders. So they're going to get up and down the floor yeah. and it's going mm-hmm. to be it's going to be quantity not quality. Now they have played 12 games. Volume shooters. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily volume makers. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> now Tech conversely has made 67 threes. Again, they've played two more games but still they've made 34 more three-point shots than you have. 101 mm-hmm. of 274. The Red Raiders are 67 of 194. They average eight threes made per ball game. Now they have one game that kind of throws all the stats out of out of whack, in which they beat. I want to get this name Maine of Kent. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can't, I can't make this up, Jamie. They 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 played 
Let me get this. Let me get the correct name here for you. Well, they were played, the Duke and the court jesters I, there. I, Maine at Fort Kent. Oh, okay. Okay. Maine at Fort Kent. They beat them one hundred to thirty three. It's like the other night uh, when Tech played McNeese State. The first game of the year, McNeese State beat somebody like a hundred to twenty nine. And so when I was doing some of the numbers that I like to do, like average points in the paint scored or average second chance points or points off turnovers, I threw that game out. <laughs> I didn't include those I didn't include those games in my numbers. That okay. game in my numbers. Well, because it just throws everything out. It's just ridiculous. I mean, if you're gonna play somebody uh, that at that level and beat them 100 to 29 or 100 to 33, then those those stats don't deserve to be in the in the in the rundown. So, how many stats would you throw away for the Red Raider basketball team? Well, nope, they haven't beaten. Well, I might throw. I wouldn't. I wouldn't throw out Jackson State, but it was like the first game of the year for McNeese State, and I just said, I'm not including that. I'm not. I'm not because it just jacks everything up. It's probably wrong of me to do that, but I was. I took that as. I took that as my license to be able to do that. I I wouldn't say that that would qualify as you staying in your lane. Mm-hmm. You kind of became judge, jury, and executioner on whether did. somebody's stats for a certain game count right. or not. Right. right. But hey, you do you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first time I've admitted that I did that. I didn't. I didn't admit that on the broadcast only because. Oh, just, so not only did you do it. You didn't tell anybody about it until Nefariously. now, so you lied. I didn't lie. I just you didn't, didn't lie. That's not what they're averaging. I did not, did not lie. I just didn't. If I you, just all you would have taken is said adjusted stats. <laughs> I just chose not to include those. Like in that in that uh, Maine at Fort Kent game, uh, Houston Christian had 64 points in the paint. Okay? They only made eight threes. They were terrible from the three-point line by their standards but that's their average mm-hmm. eight okay they made 40 field goals i just felt like i just felt like that those stats for mcneese state the other night against whomever they played that they beat 100 to 29 it was just was not necessary mm-hmm. to include that so i didn't so in this particular case like you said running them off the three-point line getting back on transition is going to be important You've been listening to the Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3. For more from Lubbock Sports Station, go to double T 973.com.